Okay, we'll start recording. Uh, we are having a conversation with Professor B.V. Rao as, um, as uh, B.V. as we used to call him, I still call him that. And uh, he's been my teacher and professor in ISI since uh, I was 16 years old. So I have known him for a long time. And a lot of this conversation will be about him, my interaction with him and, and uh, his, uh, his life. So um, let's start with uh, when you started, uh, you grew up in Andhra Pradesh, right? Right. Uh, you didn't grow up in a, in a big city. Um, no, it was a small village. How did you end up uh, studying mathematics from a small village? Well, in our uh, school there was mm -hmm. a teacher who yes. created interest. Yes. And especially in college, when I was doing my pre-university, okay. after school, okay. there was one teacher. But how did you have to go to, did you have to go to some other place to go to pre-university? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. from our uh, village. How far was that? Uh, it was, uh, well, uh, if it is summer, uh -huh. it is about uh, 7 kilometers. Uh -huh. And if it is rainy season, it will uh, be about 12 or 13 kilometers. You have to go about roundabout ways. Around about ways. Okay, so the distance <laughs> is a function of season. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, and, and then how did the... And the then uh, they sort of created interest mm -hmm. in mathematics. Yes. And uh, the physics teachers, so I had physics and mathematics both. Okay. But some of the physics teachers did not impress that much upon me. Okay. So that's why I was attracted towards mathematics. Okay. And this teacher, Chidambar Rao, uh -huh. who used to take uh, keen interest, uh -huh. if you have a problem, go to him. Okay. Then generally some teachers would say, have you followed everything I said, why are you doing this and so on. Uh -huh. But this teacher is not like that. Uh -huh. Whatever you have, he has to solve. Okay. So that really created a lot of depression. Okay. So he really stimulated the interest in mathematics right. for you. Yeah. And then how, how did you go about? Uh, well, then after I finished my uh, mathematics uh, BSc in Kali, uh -huh. then I went to Hyderabad, Osmania University. Yes. And there we had a great teacher, R.P. Pakshirajan, uh -huh. in probability. Okay. So he sort of again was very rigorous uh -huh. and uh, Allow the students to ask questions. Okay. This is one of the things that we lack in the system. Mm -hmm. Teachers don't encourage. In fact, discourage. Students to ask questions. Yes. Okay? And uh, so when you have a teacher who encourages you to ask questions, mm -hmm. that really gives you double encouragement in a sense. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that is why uh, I was again more interested in mathematics mm -hmm. and statistics. Mm -hmm. That was in Osmani University, Hyderabad. Okay. And after that, of course, I applied for ISI uh -huh. and came. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when I was doing my MSc statistics, mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, knowing very much about ISI. Okay. I have to write an entrance test for ISI. Uh -huh. But after MSc exams, I don't stay in Hyderabad, I go back to Middle Age. Okay. okay. So, how do I prepare for the test? And we had a classmate, Radha Aviyar. Uh -huh. So she said, don't worry, I'll borrow books from the library and give you. Go back to your village and okay. prepare. When you come here to write the test, you can return the books to me. Okay. That is how I prepared and then wrote the test. Okay. Hmm. And how did you do in the test? I think I did well. I don't know the marks and so on. Uh -huh. But I was called for interview. Okay. And then I think uh, Dharmadhikari was there. Mm -hmm. uh, probably we have been there, I don't remember. Okay. But I remember only Thakmadikari okay. who asked some questions in his obvious. Okay. It was not like a current day where there is a you know, bunch of uh, people who sit and interview the candidate. Okay. So whenever somebody comes, uh -huh. he will report to the obvious. Uh -huh. Then probably CR Rao would advise, okay? Okay. Who he should go and meet. I see. So I was asked to meet Thakmadikari. So it's, it was on one on one kind of interview? Oh yes, one on one. I see, I see. Then he talked to me and he said, okay, these are the courses you've written and so on. So, so it just, you know, your admission was done then and there, so to speak. Right, yeah, then okay. and there. And then, then you joined ISI. Right, then I joined ISI. As a PhD student. Correct, right. as a PhD student. Yes. So what was the process like? I mean, PhD students, did they take courses or you just left on your own and you just do your own thing? You see, as always, you know, had... Uh, an entirely different idea of things. So when we joined, he started a new thing 
called pre research course okay so he knew that the students who are coming from colleges hmm. are not up to the mark to do research okay course. so he started what we call pre research course that was about one and a half years or something okay so after you finish that you will be made a research scholar okay so we were given courses with the mstat second year students so you actually have to pass those courses mm-hmm. before you can become a full fledged right. scholar yeah. okay okay in fact some of my batchmates were sent away after 3 months i see and some were sent away after 1 year okay so finally i think four or five of them we made how many how many started out i think around 10 i see started out yeah i see okay so this about 40% survived right the right, first yeah. time Yeah. Did did all the four actually eventually get a PhD from us? Not really. Okay. So one of them left again. Just uh-huh. Viram, uh-huh. myself, uh-huh. and another one came in Shastri. Okay. But there was another uh, friend of ours, Arak Suru, who stayed, but uh, he left again in the middle. He went away to Australia. I see. But finally, he did not finish either. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay then what did you do in uh, your uh, how how did you proceed going about your PhD I mean getting a topics and so on what did you do So now but then what happened was uh, again you know in a sense there was nothing for students to do mm-hmm. so somehow the destiny takes you to where you go uh-huh. so again do was busy okay so those were the days uh-huh. where perhaps you are on halavi school we should be at the top people to uh-huh. spend a considerable amount of time yes right? that's very important do visit it one month wow nobody is equal to it okay yeah so we visited for one month he gave uh-huh. a series of lectures on potential theory okay and she are now very serious about uh, students learning that okay before do came uh-huh. he made a potential theory study group i see so we gave lectures on various topics and uh-huh. prepared ourselves okay for for the for the do visit yeah And after two left, I was very much interested in Brownian motion, probability, and so on. Mm-hmm. Mm, I was reading a paper of uh, David Blackwell on a class of probabilities basis. Okay. So then, from probabilities, slowly I drifted to set theory. Okay. That was about analytic sets and so on. Okay. I so let me stop here for a second. Um, I know you wrote this paper on uh, Ulam's conjecture. Right. How did you? Yeah. So I drifted to this thing. And that was the time. In fact, before that, actually, mm-hmm. Ashok Maitra came from uh, U.S. He was a student of Dave Blackwell. Yes. So he worked on dynamic programming and so on, mm-hmm. which needed selection theorems. Mm-hmm. Again, back to set theory. Okay. So he gave a series of lectures on set theory. Okay. And since I was already drawn to set theory, uh-huh. I took serious interest. Okay. And uh, then we covered lot of ground in analytic sets, Boolean sets, all these. Okay. Then we were talking about the sigma fields being countably generated, etc. Mm-hmm. And then we asked ourselves whether the sigma field generated by analytic sets is countably generated. Okay. So I kept on thinking and who will prove it in that mm-hmm. to prove that it is not countably generated. Okay. okay. It is really the proof was not purely statistical. Mm-hmm. It had prove it in it. Mm-hmm. When we sent it for publication, then I think Matiuski was the referee. Uh-huh. He pointed out that this is the problem of Coulomb. Oh, so you didn't know this was Coulomb's conjecture at all? No, we didn't know that. Okay, had you known that it was Coulomb's conjecture, had you tried to say, okay, see, see, you know, usually, uh, usually people say, okay, I conjecture because I cannot prove it. Yeah, probably if we had known it, we wouldn't have. <laughs> you, you think you would perhaps always. Come to the point where it was too difficult. Yes. Yes. And they leave it. Yes. But uh, I didn't know that at all. Okay. Yeah. But you had already proved the result. Right. I had already proved that. That was yeah. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so the associate editors pointed out that it was actually <laughs> only one. So you incorporated that afterwards. Right. And then the revised version was yeah. published. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, did you ever talk to Ulam about that uh, after? No, I did not actually. Okay. I did not meet him. Yeah. <laughs> so that that would have been nice if you could yeah. actually. Um, and and then what did you do? How did you proceed? And then having. Uh, what did that become part of your thesis? Yes, that became part of my thesis. Okay. Having done some little work like this, mm-hmm. I thought I should continue in set theory. Okay. Instead of going back to probability. Okay. So I continued in set theory. That okay. is, I submitted thesis. Okay. And I think uh, David Blackwell was uh, impressed with okay. this work. In fact, one of my papers afterwards was communicated by David Blackwell to Bulletin KMS. Uh huh. 
So he recommended me for uh, Miller Fellowship at Berkeley. Okay. That is how I ended up going to Berkeley. Okay. So how long was the Miller Fellowship uh, good for? That was two years. Two years, okay. Yeah. Two years you had no teaching, just research. No teaching, just research. And uh, because we were doing set theory, mm -hmm. naturally it led to mathematical logic. Uh -huh. There were several undecidable questions there. Yes. So, even before uh, leaving for U.S., Ashok Maitra presented me a book on mathematical logic. Okay. And we were conducting lectures. He was uh, giving lectures and so on. Okay. So, when I went to Berkeley, I was mainly learning the logic, mathematical logic. Okay. But you were in the stat department or were you in the... I was in the stat department. Okay. As a Miller Fellow. But I was attending lectures. In, in mathematics. In, uh, yes, mathematical logic. Okay. And after two years, uh, I spent one more year mm -hmm. in the stat department okay. as a visiting assistant professor. Okay. And then uh, took some courses and so on. Okay. And but then you had to teach. Yeah, then I had to teach. Okay. Yeah. So, then I returned by his mm -hmm. Did, was, was it the first time you were actually teaching students? Actually, I taught even in uh, ISA. When you were a PhD? Right. Okay. See, Did you teach BSTAT then? I taught uh, MSTAT, characteristic functions, okay. such courses. Okay. Because Seattle had another uh, idea. Uh -huh. This is scholars. Uh -huh. Should not be just doing full time research. They should teach only that they will understand what are the problems. That's a good idea. And then yeah. it will clarify uh -huh. to themselves. Yes. If not the students. Absolutely. Okay? <laughs> So, many of us were uh, encouraged to teach uh -huh. and in fact, I guess I did not have that much faculty in those days. I see. Research college had to teach. Okay. And so you are encouraged. Yeah. So that helped. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So you have I actually, I remember when you came back from Berkeley, you, you, you started teaching in, in our group. Right. So, yeah, that was yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, first year. Right. You became our class teacher and so on. Right. Yes, I, I, I took classes with you. I, don't know. I still have my notes. <laughs> so uh, then, then you came back to ISI and then you uh, joined ISI as a faculty. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I remember we used to go swimming in the, in the ISI pond, you, me, and sometimes Ramurti. Um, so we had lots of conversations then and back then. Um, I went to your office one time and you had this stack of uh, papers, they were, uh, I said, what are those? He said, they are reprints. I had no idea what reprints meant. <laughs> so that was the first time I saw something called reprints. That's how I learned the term. Um, uh, anyway, you, you continued on as uh, you became an uh, associate professor at ISI and then uh, professor and then you became a research scientist. Right. Uh, how does that process work in ISI? How, how does one become, you know? Not everybody becomes research scientists. Well, I think uh, after several years of service and so on, I think when S.P. Rao took over as director, mm -hmm. they did this uh, distinguished scientist or something, some position. Mm -hmm. So I think the previous director was already processing okay. certain cases. Okay. When S.P. Rao took over as director, uh -huh. several people suggested to him uh -huh. to look into my case. Okay. So he asked me to submit okay. my CV and so on. Okay. Then of course I disposed it up. I said no, 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 unnecessary. Uh -huh. And uh, but then he sent an uh, official letter from the director's office okay. saying that uh, you are requested to submit your CV and so on. Okay. So then I submitted okay. it. And somehow it went through. Mm -hmm. That is how I was made. Mm -hmm. It is not something for you to apply. Okay, so you are asked to... It is something the director will oh, take okay. up and, yeah. Okay, and then they send it out to outside referees right. and then, then they get uh, comments right. from them and yeah. so on. Uh, so, I, I, I understand you also became acting director for some time and so on when... Oh yeah, when Kalyan Sinha was uh, away for a brief period, uh -huh. I was there as acting director. Uh -huh. do, you, do you like doing uh, administrative work? No, I cannot. There, there's no question of like or not like. First of all, one should be able to do then the question of liking or not liking the right is. Okay, so I can't do it. Yeah, I, 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 I try to avoid doing administrative work at all costs. <laughs> and uh, the only reason I survived even those few days mm -hmm. as acting director mm -hmm. was because of Somesh Babaji. 
I see. Every day, <laughs> I have a conference with him. See? On all the problems, yeah. So he was a natural for doing administrative stuff. Right. He was very natural. Yeah. Some, I think some people have it, other people don't have it. Yeah. I, I don't have it in me. I don't <laughs> like to do it. I, I try to avoid doing it. No, but uh, many of the youngsters like to have ideas and so on. Yes. Regarding the administration too. Yes. I don't have any ideas. <laughs> uh, so then uh, from ISI, then after you retired from ISI, then you joined CMI. How did that work? Yeah, you see. There is uh, empty, first of all, CMI, mm -hmm. when it started its courses, mm -hmm. it depended very much on the retired people. Right. Okay? Right. And people from IMSC, Institute of Mathematical Sciences, uh -huh. and the retired people, because they were short of funds. Yes. Okay? And so... But they couldn't hire regular faculty. K.R. Okay. Patasar was here, and Narkari was here, oh, I see. Professor M.P. Narkari, I see. who also retired from ISI. Uh -huh. So he used to come frequently to ISI, I see. and then uh, whenever he comes, he would tell me, you know, you should uh, teach at CMA. Okay. I say, okay, fine. Once, he introduced me to Professor Shashadri. Uh -huh. Then Shashadri said... Uh, but did, you didn't know Shashadri from previous... Uh, that was the first time. I see. I was aware of his name. Sure, so sure, of course. Okay, but uh, I He know. didn't know firsthand. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, he asked me, if you want, you can come right now. Okay. <laughs> if you are worried about the Provident Fund and other things, uh -huh. I can work it out with your issue. You don't have to think. Okay. So then I said, no, no, after I retire, I'll come. <laughs> okay. Because you know, nice probability atmosphere uh -huh. and all those things there. Mm -hmm. So I knew beforehand that the CMA doesn't have probability group. Yeah. So I knew the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So that is why I thought I spent. And mm -hmm. So after I retired, mm -hmm. I went to Shashatri. Yeah. Okay. So, so what courses you started teaching? At what level did you? You see, uh, here they wanted to start uh, financial mathematics course. Okay. So they scheduled me for teaching probability as one in that course. Okay. That was in 2009. Okay. But this is uh, at an undergraduate level? At the graduate. At the, graduate, at the master's course. Yes. Okay. A master's course in uh -huh. communications of mathematics. Okay. But it so happened that in 2009 admission test, uh -huh. only one student qualified for this uh, MSA applications. Oh, so you taught one student? No. So they said uh, he would join the regular mathematics course. Okay. He will not have applications. Okay. So they informed me of that. Uh -huh. So I was wondering, so I got it when I just said on my part, uh -huh. instead of saying, okay, I don't have to teach, uh -huh. okay, I don't to react saying that, uh, oh, I can teach BSc course. Okay. And case one was looking up at the courses here, uh -huh. so he immediately wrote back saying, oh, thank you for your suggestion, we would like you to teach BSc course. Okay. So, so what, what did you teach I, in the BSc? I taught BSc analysis course when okay. I came here first. Okay. So this was uh, BSc, I, I guess, would be second year, third year. Right, this is the BSc second year analysis course. Of okay. The calculus okay. courses, analysis okay. course. Okay. And uh, how do you find the students? Mm. I think it is the same. Okay. Same as in ISI. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I had the same feeling as KRP had. Huh. You know, once somebody asked KRP when he was teaching here, uh -huh. he used to be at ISI. Uh -huh. So somebody asked KRP, how is... Uh, this year and so on. Yeah. Then KRP was, well, I came to Calcutta and I have learned my mathematics in Calcutta. Now I am repaying my debt by teaching the Bengalis in CMI. <laughs> okay. So I had exactly similar feeling when I came here. Majority of the students were Bengalis. <laughs> majority, not mm -hmm. yeah, sure. And also, I think students were also very happy because I was uh, freely speaking in Bengali with them. <laughs> <laughs> so they were very happy too. So that is how the entire thing started. <laughs> I see. The, yeah. the other day I, I was uh, eating lunch at the, at the cafeteria and uh, there was four students sitting at the next table and they were chatting between themselves and uh, they were di discussing a, a, a very... Um, uh, what we call intellectual movie, Mephisto. Huh? And okay. uh, the whole discussion was going on at a fairly high level about how good the movie is and so on but what 
really surprised me, I guess, was that uh, the whole discussion was in Bengali. <laughs> because all the four students who were sitting around the table, they were all obviously Bengalis. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's my experience to hear. <laughs> In the first year I came, mm -hmm. I just uh, talked to some people outside, of the, somebody from IIT for example. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I asked him, do you know where is CMI? He said, no, I don't know, IIT Madras. Okay. okay. But the students in Vidnapur and Calcutta, they are <laughs> both CMI, but yes. not in IIT Madras. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's really surprising given that you know she, CMI has a right. relatively short history right. and not even in their vicinity. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden it's in their radar screen. That's that's very surprising. Yeah, I, I mean you know uh, if you go back 50 years, outside of Calcutta and some parts of Andhra Pradesh, people didn't know anything about ISI either. Right. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's really encouraging for CMI. Okay, thank you very much.